Charlie Pride here and welcome to our YouTube channel Pride of the Villages. Well, obviously Jennifer is not sitting next to me and that's because she is actually working today. So uh, we weren't able to get out and shoot some video traveling around either the villages or outside of the villages. So, But yet yeah, I wanted to put together uh, an informative video. Uh, we got a lot of positive reviews on our video that we did on the explanation of the villagers pools. So the subject I wanted to talk about today is the new home warranty and uh, hopefully I can explain some of the lessons that we learned and have some recommendations. So it would be useful for those that are thinking about buying a newly constructed home in the villages or those that have recently bought a newly constructed home in the villages. So a disclaimer up front is, is I am by no means an expert on uh, home construction. I have no background in it. I uh, was in the Army for 31 years. Um, and in that 31 years, I moved 15 times. And in that process, we moved into a series of military housing, uh, rented private homes, we have bought pre-owned homes, we have bought newly constructed homes. And when we bought newly constructed homes, there was always um, a, a grace period of uh, or the home warranty where you, uh, if you found any defective materials or workmanship, you put it on your punch list and the, uh, the builder took care of that. So moving here to the villages, uh, we expected no different. We know that we would find some items and that it would go on the punch list and would be taken care of. So a little bit about the uh, timeline on our uh, move to the villages. We were living down in Tampa. Uh, I knew I wanted to retire in the summer of 2020 time frame. And we knew we wanted to live in a 55 plus community. So we started looking uh, around Central Florida uh, in particular the villages and uh, we were looking at villages for really about about two years uh, coming up here maybe uh, once every uh, 90 days uh, checking out how the uh, community was developing and uh, in particular uh, home sites we were very interested in uh, purchasing a home site designing our house um, and seeing it built we had never uh, never designed a house before it was always uh, either uh, pre-owned homes we had bought or uh, inventory homes so in November of 19 we went ahead and we uh, saw a home site we wanted and we put a contract on that our uh, design week with the uh, with the uh, the team there at Sumter uh, Landing occurred in the second week of January and really the house was complete probably in about 75 days and we were able to close on a house at the end of April. Uh, unfortunately, this was also the time of uh, April 20, April uh, 2020 was also the time period that everything was going into lockdown as far as uh, COVID. So um, the uh, cl closing itself, um, we had done previously, you know, the face-to-face -face closings, well, everything. Uh, villages policy was is that it would to be uh, done remotely there would be no face-to-face -face as far as the uh, the real estate agent the closing agent or the builder um, it closed it closed on time uh, we got the keys uh, to the house the day that we uh, expected to uh, everywhere everybody worked hard on, uh, on getting all that done but unfortunately uh, we were not be able, we were not able to meet with the builder to go through uh, a home orientation, and uh, the home orientation actually had to be done uh, uh, over the phone. And uh, to be honest, I could say that uh, it wasn't anything like uh, being able to meet with the builder and doing it face to face. So, based on the fact that the telephone home orientation was not optimal. There was some videos that were created and uh, put on a website, and I have the website uh, below. Um, these orientation videos um, covered everything from your plumbing and your HVAC in your house to the doors 
to the electrical, to the garage, the exterior of the house, your smoke detectors, and importantly it also talked about the uh, closing packet and the associated paperwork that uh, is uh, required with um, submitting any uh, anything you, f you find in the house that isn't up to uh, your standards. So while I'm sure we're getting back to pre-COVID normal closings here in the villages, um, I would still recommend, and that would be my first recommendation, is uh, take a look at these uh, videos. Um, when you get to your closing, there's just so many things that are going on um, with, with your move and uh, your temporary quarters and uh, trying to set up your utilities. Um, these are videos that you could view ahead of time and uh, become familiar with uh, the intricacies of the, uh, the houses here in the villages and uh, the different components and how they're developed. So it would be well worth your time. Well, after we closed on the house, um, we walked into our kitchen and there was a series of documents on the uh, kitchen counter. And one of those documents was the uh, Home care and maintenance guide that was provided on this um, on this uh, thumb drive. Uh, this is a very uh, extensive document. It's 88 pages long, but uh, and it had, it covers everything as far as uh, as far as your house, both uh, interior and exterior. Um, but you don't have to wait to your closing to uh, to view this document. It is available on that website. The second document is the homeowner's maintenance form and this just uh, gives you uh, uh, guidelines on as a homeowner what you're responsible for as far as the periodic maintenance so this would include uh, things like your uh, your filters changing out your filters in your, uh, your HVAC system and uh, it came as a little bit of a surprise to me that um, I had always uh, uh, dealt with in the past the, uh, the thin one inch uh, filters. Well here in my carrier system it's a four inch uh, filter so uh, just be prepared for kind of the sticker shock that uh, that these four inches uh, four inch filters come with um, but uh, thankfully there's only uh, one to replace every uh, six months uh, or so. Next is a sheet for uh, scheduling your orientation for both your um, your automatic irrigation system as well as your HVAC system and uh, pest lawn treatment. Uh, if you have a pool, there would also be uh, an orientation on how to uh, operate your pool if you had a pool put in as part of your part of your build. Um, I would uh, I would say that I found uh, even though I had an automatic. Uh, irrigation system down in Tampa and very, a lot of similarities. I still found it uh, very helpful that the uh, gentleman came out and uh, showed me how to use uh, not only the controller but uh, how the, uh, the pop-up uh, sprinklers worked a little bit differently than I had previously. The fourth item was the builder product registration form. Our, uh, our build came with uh, Samsung appliances, both the uh, refrigerator the gas range, the uh, built-in microwave and the dishwasher, and all four of those items had to be uh, input directly to Samsung um, once we occupied the house to uh, to kick in the warranty for those items. The next two items I say, I'll say is probably the most important items. And number one is the homeowner orientation contract review. Now this document is to be filled out by both the builder and yourself. Um, especially during the, uh, the orientation, the face-to-face -face that you have with your builder. And as you can see here, it's, uh, it covers uh, a lot of the major items. Um, so if something is uh, inoperable or uh, isn't up to standards, then you would want to make sure that uh, you get that on here, as well as uh, you need to uh, sign it. It has to be uh, submitted just uh, right after the uh, orientation to the warranty department. And the last piece of uh, documentation is the buyer's checklist. This is a form that you use uh, to turn in any items that you feel are not correct in your home. Uh, the checklist is to be completed within seven days uh, from closing. 
And this is where you would put uh, items that you find, such as uh, uh, maybe scratches or dents in doors or on walls, uh, chips, gouges, uh, cosmetic things that uh, that you needs to be corrected. Since we did not have a face-to-face -face builder's orientation, everything for us was uh, self-discovery. Um, and that would be the second major recommendation that uh, I would suggest and that is once you occupy the house um, ensure that you uh, go completely through it um, check uh, every floorboard every uh, every door handle and turn on all the switches to make sure that everything is uh, fully operational and uh, if you find anything wrong to make sure that you uh, you put it on the uh, buyers checklist some of the things, just for example, that uh, we discovered is um, we had uh, a lot, there was 20 items total that we found. Um, a lot of them were minor, things like uh, dents in a laundry room door which had to be replaced, uh, a kitchen cabinet door that was warped had to be replaced. Uh, we did have uh, two dents in, uh, in two of our floor planks and uh, we had uh, we had opted for the luxury vinyl flooring, which uh, we were very pleased with, and when we had to replace those planks, it was uh, it was an easy task. Um, we had a dining room uh, light dimmer switch, which was interoperable, and uh, one of the big items that we had, which would have probably obviously been discovered during the uh, if we did have a builder's orientation, and that is the master bath shower um, did not work, and the reason it did not work, it was actually plumbed backwards and when they came in to do the repairs on that it was a little bit of a task because the, the plumber had to cut through the drywall had to uh, had to do what he had to do and then we had to have a drywall guy come in to repair the drywall then we had a painter come in had to come in to do uh, the painting so that was probably the biggest uh, thing that we found um, during our uh, inspection of the house uh, exteriorly uh, there was an area of the garage door that was unpainted. There was also an area on the front door that was unpainted. Minor things. Also, they had uh, a lanai fan, which was inoperable. We also had a crack in uh, one of the uh, cement pads on the patio that uh, uh, T&D actually had to come in and, uh, and replace for us. Also, um, take a look at your lawn. Take a look at your plants. Uh, we had an area in our sod that was uh, damaged. I think it was damaged from one of the contractors cleaning out one of their buckets. It looked like paint had been poured onto the lawn, so it, it killed the grass. And uh, it, it came out and uh, replaced our, our, uh, the dead sod area. But that needs to occur right away because the village's policy on the use and care manual is, is that uh, 30 days from closing, um, if you find any dead uh, trees, shrubs, grass, they'll replace it. But uh, basically, after those 30 days, it's uh, it's on you as far as uh, replacement. So uh, make sure you check on that. In summary, on the buyer's checklist, we had about uh, 20 items that uh, we discovered. Um, I can say in comparison to other properties that uh, new construction that we'd bought in the past, it was it was it was about average, no more. Uh, uh, no less on the items. So once the buyer's checklist was submitted to warranty department, I can say that the, uh, the service in getting those items corrected was outstanding. Um, I submitted it one day, the next morning I was getting calls from the contractors to set up appointments to come in and, and, uh, and fix, the, uh, fix whatever deficiencies were just discovered. And I can say that uh, both the warranty department and all the contractors that were uh, they're very courteous and professional and I think we had about 80% of the items were complete within the first week. There's a couple items obviously like the cabinet doors that there was a specific style, a specific color that had to uh, be ordered and that took a little bit longer time but uh, it was uh, it was a very expeditious process. Now to talk about the warranty itself, when we uh, when we signed a contract on the home site, we were given a warranty addendum, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, read it, and that is, um, uh, the buyer is being furnished with an express limited warranty by home buyer's warranty. 
in connection with the buyer's purchase of the home. The warranty being furnished is issued by a third party, home buyer's warranty. Your warranty includes one year workmanship and material, two year warranty on electrical, plumbing, and mechanical systems, and a 10 year limited structural warranty. And all that is explained in more detail. They'll, they'll give you the booklet here from, uh, from home buyer's warranty. And uh, between the warranty addendum and this booklet, it's all uh, pretty much self explanatory. Now even after this initial period after the closing where you have your punch list, your punch list is being worked on, realize that uh, throughout the next year of your warranty there's items that uh, are probably going to pop up, uh, especially as the case is uh, as the house starts to settle, uh, the seasons change, uh, things expand and contract. Also uh, there's uh, items that you're going to use more frequently, especially during the summer months, like things like ceiling fans and your HVAC system. So uh, we fully expected some items to pop up. Um, I had one issue with my, my garage door. The, uh, the, the motor chain had to be adjusted. Another item we had was one of the ceiling fans went out in the bedroom and had to be uh, replaced. And once we got into the rainy season in June and July, we discovered that there was actually uh, a leak in our roof uh, into one of the uh, guest bedrooms, and uh, that was remedied, finally remedied by uh, actually having to replace uh, some of the asphalt shingles up on the roof. But all of that was taken care of, um, and we continued to monitor the, uh, the house throughout the year. One of the items that I failed to mention at closing is that um, you should be receiving um, a box or two of this uh, touch-up paint, which will have your uh, all the canisters of both your interior and exterior colors. Um, when you're moving in new furniture or your old furniture from wherever you came from, things are going to get uh, scratched, and you may have to do uh, some of the painting yourself to uh, to correct that. Also. Um, I talked about I had the luxury vinyl flooring planks. Uh, they left me a box of those planks, so if in the future any of those planks get damaged, I can go ahead and uh, and I can go ahead and have those replaced. And uh, which is great because there's obviously manufacturers that produce these items that may not color may not carry this color anymore, or uh, or the manufacturer may not even be in business. So so that was a good. Uh, a good bonus at uh, closing to have both the paint and the uh, additional flooring planks. So this brings me to my third and last recommendation and really this recommendation came from my uh, neighbors, both the uh, neighbors that had lived in the villages previously and had recently moved to the villages and that is to go ahead and get your, uh, your home inspected prior to the uh, one year anniversary of your warranty. Um, I'm sure there are several reputable uh, inspectors uh, that work in the villages. The uh, name I kept hearing come up was uh, D'Angelo Inspections. That's who my neighbors were using and that's who we ultimately used. I will say that these inspectors get booked up well in advance. So uh, in my case, I uh, scheduled the inspection about, about nine months out. And talking to uh, Frank D'Angelo on the phone, he recommended that it be done within the last month of your warranty. Our inspection was done in the morning uh, by one of Frank's uh, sons and uh, another gentleman. Uh, Frank's son did the uh, interior of the house and the other gentleman did the exterior to include uh, inspecting the roof. I can say that they went through the house with a fine tooth comb and you can see here on this uh, inspection list of all the different areas that they looked at. So what did the uh, inspectors find? Uh, there were a uh, few items that uh, were uh, minor in nature. Um, there was uh, a couple door hinges that were uh, missing screws. There was areas on our bathroom tiles that weren't uh, grouted correctly. Also around one of the guest tubs, it wasn't uh, caught correctly. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing to admit this, but uh, we discovered, I'm not sure how Jennifer and I did not notice this, but we had uh, four interior door handles that were either uh, backwards or upside down. And, and you, as you can see from this uh, picture, in the lower left-hand corner is the correct installation of the door handle. And we had uh, 
four door handles that were upside down that had to be uh, that had to be corrected. Uh, more significantly, we had uh, cracks that had developed in our uh, ceiling over lanai. This was uh, kind of an extensive uh, project to repair with the drywall. Uh, work that had to be done as well as the uh, the painting so uh, you know in the end uh, getting the house inspected it was uh, well worth a couple hundred dollars uh, to do so so to finally wrap up this video I'd like to leave you just with those three recommendations and that is number one uh, be as informed as you can before the closing on your newly constructed home and a good way to do that is to go to the village's home warranty website where you'll not only find all those documents that you're going to be uh, required to uh, fill out, but also those introductory videos that uh, talk about the specific components of your uh, home. Number two is once you have your closing, make sure you do a self-inspection of your house, a uh, thorough walkthrough. Uh, I understand you're going to have a face-to-face -face with the builder, but there's probably some things during that process that won't be discovered. Make sure you get all those items on your punch list and submit it to the warranty department. And like I said, they're very good about uh, making sure that those uh, items get corrected. And, uh, you know, monitor your home throughout the year. Uh, the seasonal changes here, uh, you know, impact the house differently, as, uh, as we discovered. Uh, and lastly, uh, you may want to consider a home inspection before your one-year warranty is up. Uh, like I said, it, uh, it was well worth our, uh, our money to uh, go ahead and have that done. And uh, we feel pretty good about the condition of our home here and going into the second year of occupancy. So hopefully you found this uh, video informative. And uh, if you did, uh, please state so in the comments. Uh, I can do more of these videos in the future talking about our experiences uh, as a homeowner. It isn't always about... Uh, going out and enjoying the things inside and outside of the villages, the videos that we do. But uh, also, uh, you know, I find that uh, moving to the villages, I found some uh, videos of other YouTube creators that uh, really helped Jennifer and I out and move. And uh, hopefully we're doing the, uh, the same for uh, other people thinking about coming here to the villages. So uh, until then, see you on the next video.